Classera is a gamified LMS for K-12 schools. Uh, our focus is to make sure that we can inspire and motivate students and engage uh, student populations at scale to help develop talent locally. Um, the problem that we've identified, next slide please, is that literally the Title I schools, free and reduced lunch populations, as well as response to intervention populations are fueling black incarceration. So we've got a failure here and there's actually no system in place at scale and there's definitely no product at this time that can actually start addressing, you know, this major problem in, in our community. So when we look at our product, next slide please. What we have done is we've had an, an LMS that integrates with the SIS and long term we want to make sure that we help build school communities and help engage those communities to make sure that we can actually attain you know, higher graduation rates, higher solutions in terms of pull through and more than anything else, create career pathways that are actually uh, effective. You can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So what we're trying to do is get as many pilots as possible. When we ask about what's important right now, what has to happen, we need to start bringing our product into these challenging um, areas that are really high in terms of a class um, failure and install our product because it is a proven product. We're also looking for potential um, Series A investments so we can scale the product. But the one thing I wanna make sure that's very clear here, this is a proven product. This isn't something that the US doesn't have this product and that's what we're trying to achieve by reaching out to teams like this. My question to the panel is with COVID-19 impacting Title I school funding here in the next couple of years, how are we gonna create better pathways to higher paying careers for black learners? Anyone wanna take that one? Um, yeah, I can jump in. How are you, by the way? Wait. Uh, very yeah. good, very good, about yourself. <laughs> I'm good. Um, how do we best develop pathways for black learners? Uh, first of all, we focus on academic excellence. That's basically one of the things that will separate those students from others because right now what I call learning is a uh, SAS scholarship as a service they only pick up the piece they want need and keep it moving so I'm um, focusing on academic excellence without transforming STEM because what what's happening now is STEM is kind of morphing into uh, paralleling to sports <laughs> you know it's like you do this you do that you do that then you get the big money yay so making sure that we don't transform academics into athletics and and have that whole type of that that focus on I'm only doing this because this pays a lot of money that that's the thing that I, I fear is happening because once, I mean, and I'll tell you from experience myself, being naive and, folk, and being a nerd, I thought all I had to do was be smart and work hard. And this is the part with the social impact piece and engineering and all that stuff. They don't teach us any of that. <laughs> we just learn the, the, the STEM, the, the science and the math parts. So uh, being able to be agile is my short answer to that is uh, how these black learners can work towards that. They need to understand that it's not a direct path to the prize. They also have to understand that human nature plays a big part because just because you do well, <laughs> you still gotta jump past the hurdle to get the job. It's not yes. automatically gonna fall in your lap. So exactly. that's, that's my experience and I have lived it. I have not worked one day in my life as a physicist. I spent 12 years in school. I did a postdoc, but jumping past the hurdles and being who I am in my field did not guarantee that I was going to just automatically become a, a research physicist because I was the wrong color and the wrong gender, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Burge or Ron, do you have anything to, to add to, in response to this question? Uh, yeah, I can contribute just a little bit. Uh, Ken, uh, we've met recently, uh, and I, I think the area of focus 
that you're considering is is an important one, and I'm grateful for the increased attention that's bringing that's being brought to this area. I think we've been talking about this school to prison pipeline. Can I ask Fab? Can you go back two slides to that 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 slide that had a lot of impact? I thought the yeah, the one before that one. I think that's your winning picture right there. I think if you have a solution that speaks to to this directly, uh, I think every school system that has uh, that cares about its mission of serving all students has to sit up and pay attention. And so uh, I, I know your your aspiration is. As you mentioned in that in that next slide that you that you showed, what you're hoping for is some money to go after it. I got to imagine that there uh, we talked about impact investing. We talked about uh, these social conscious funds out there. I would imagine every one of those folks would be very very interested. And if you come to them as you I know you can with a, a case that you've already done this and you have demonstrated results, I think you'll be very successful in getting them to sit up and listen, whether you want to take their money or give them the deal they're looking for is an altogether different proposition. But I think you'll be really successful with having uh, their, uh, their keen attention on something like this. Uh, because I think we're in a moment of time where the US is going to care a lot more passionately about this rather than uh, just giving it lip service as they have been for just far too long. We've been working on it for a year, Burge. This isn't yeah. just some, um, this is what we're doing. It's what we got to oh, get yeah. done. Yep. And, and is this is this an LMS? I'm not clear what the product is. It a, is a solution in schools that helps prevent blacks from entering the prison system, or is it well to help? It, it's it's really a community uh, development tool, and and with the LMS we can measure what the engagement is for a specific use set. So if I'm only looking at response to intervention, I can drill down and kind of understand what's impacting that demographic. So the solution itself is something you just have to see because it's not just an LMS, a canvas or a blackboard. This is literally a community development tool. We partner with the school, we don't sell to the school and we reach out to community leaders to involve them in those career paths. So take an example of let's say a, a Comcast. We would want to reach out to that school and bring, excuse me, to that organization and, and get them involved in those Title I schools showing those type of pathways to those type of careers and giving them some hope and inspiration. So we measure the engagement level as well as the motivation and inspiration. So that way we can just get them from A to B, not A to Z, just get them going towards those pathways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a very robust solution that's real hard in two minutes to say, hey, this is what we do. Burj will tell you in an hour, you couldn't get through it all, but it's a plug and play straight to the SIS. Uh, and away you go, but we still have to embed ourselves with the curriculum lead superintendents to see what are the outputs, what are we shooting for, what are you doing right now? So it's a true partnership with schools. Question, are you having good success with partnering with superintendents? At this time, we literally just finished the U.S. product two weeks ago. Burge okay. was the third yeah. person to do it, <laughs> literally. Microsoft saw it, Burge saw it, and here, we're just talking about really the problem, but once you actually see this is a solution, the lights kind of go on like, wow. So it takes like four hours and literally going back and forth with the superintendent to find out how we would build up the dashboards based on the demographics of that district and or school or even a classroom. So it's, it's a very deep solution, but we're only coming to the US now, We've got 10 million users globally, but they're all in other countries. I'll share this. I think, uh, Ken, I think one of the, there's, always, there's these moments in time where people create new products for a, for, sorry, a product for a problem that does exist that's becoming uh, clear and present, uh, present minded to, to folks, yet the industry or the marketplace has not given that problem and solutions to it, a category name yet. And I think that's a little bit where you are now. And that's an exciting, it's super exciting place to be. And it's a hard place for sort of 
the everyday person like myself or anyone else who wants to put you into a bucket uh, because it's neater that way, because we understand the existing buckets and you are inventing a new one. And that's, uh, there's good and bad with that. One of the, one of the tough things is that uh, there's just this natural inclination, especially by people who have been in the marketplace for a very long time, they want to bucketize you. Yes, and I know you're being happening. resistant to it, and you should be, because I think you have a solution for a new, uh, for a challenge that doesn't have yet a solution marketplace, or a subset that is. So I know that's gonna be, I know that's gonna be a problem. I know that's gonna be a, a messaging problem for you. Uh, you can't say you're the Netflix of this, or you're the Facebook of this, or the Apple of this, because you're in, you're in a new category space. I know there are investors that, that are okay with that, uh, that instability, uh, but I know it's going to be a hard thing in your selling and your propositioning. And I just, it'll be something that you're going to constantly uh, need to address until through trial and error, you develop that, that one liner, that phrasing that communicates what it is uh, sincerely and gives people like, ah, okay, I get it. Because you got to get to that stage of people saying, oh, I get it. Right, uh, because without that, they're just they're just hanging. They don't know where to. They don't know whether to agree with you, not agree with you, support you, not support you. They're just uh, in that state of confusion. So I know you're gonna you're Thank gonna bridge you. it. I know you will. You're a smart guy, but that's where you are now, and it's unsettling for everybody. Agreed. Probably yourself as much as it is for anyone who listens to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah. Look, I've, I've, I've been in that place and it's very frustrating. And then yeah. a couple of years and you're like, oh my God, I finally got it. And you hope the window hasn't closed. But, um, <laughs> but I will say this to all the entrepreneurs in here, and it's a, um, a business partner of mine said this, and I think it's important to keep in mind, Burge, based on what you said. And, the, and his phrase is, when you're explaining, you're losing. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've <Yeah>. done that. <laughs> so, you know, and it happened. This is something that relates to every you're in a board meeting or you're in a uh, customer meeting or you're an investor meeting. When you're yeah. explaining, you're losing. And so it's just, and what you have to do is you got to give something up. And, and it's, it's really painful to an entrepreneur because then you leave the room saying they don't really get it. But, <laughs> but they, they don't have to really get it. They just got to get the one thing that they can hold on to. To, yes. to advance to that next stage. So I would just, even in your slides, how you're communicating this, you know, bounce it off of your friends and family, but just understand if you got to explain too much, you're already putting yourself a little bit in a losing proposition. And, and this, this whole entrepreneurial journey, and I think Burge and, and everybody will say, it is all about storytelling. Yep. And, and every entrepreneur is a salesperson. You start selling your customers, you start selling your investors, but you have to be able to tell that story in a way that, that people really can grasp onto it. And that's why you see some people who are successful, successful with like really poor products or raise Ooh. a lot of money that they have no business raising, but they're, but they're, damn, what? Good they're damn good storytellers. I'll tell that you doesn't that. happen in ed tech. I don't know what you're talking exactly. about. And, and I'll definitely you, work on it. And why you see schools investing millions, sometimes billions of dollars in systems <laughs> Yeah, 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 la, 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 la. I don't hear yeah. that. <laughs> LAUSD. Oh, 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 no, oh, no. <laughs> no, Ken's a smart guy. He's going to figure it out. I know he is. He's got a lot of years' experience. He knows it. Thank you very much. Thank you.